All right, today we're going to assemble our simulator series. And in order to do this, we're first gonna start out by building the aluminum frame, then we're gonna add the netting, then we're gonna add the screen, and then we're gonna add our newly designed one-piece backdrop and balance system. So let's take it from the top. We're first gonna start out by assembling the frame. Let's get started. All right, the first step is locate the four tubes that are labeled base and let's connect them together. That's what I've done in this step. Once the base is completed, we're gonna start building up. We're just gonna connect this up, just like so. All right, now I'm gonna take the last tube, and this is the red and black striped tube, and it has the sleeve net on it. All right, so now that I've connected the red and black striped tube with the sleeve net, I'm gonna undo the band here and slide the net down, making sure that the slits in the sleeve go over the connecting tube here and here, and we're gonna Velcro the very end to the bottom of the frame. So let me show you how that works. So you have a slit here, okay? And this slit, once it slides down, is gonna go over this connecting piece here. So we're gonna slide it down, and we'll go and do the other side the same way. So I'll slide this down, I'll lift up that frame, and again, I'm going to slide it through the sleeve. Now, they're both through the tabs on each side, and then once they're through the tabs on each side, we can slide the end of the sleeve all the way down. So once the sleeve is all the way down, we're going to undo our Velcro here. and just connect it through the little triangle here. And this is just gonna make sure that the net stays completely on the frame. And we'll do that on the other side as well. So again, I slide this down, wrap it, and then I'm gonna Velcro it ensuring that the net stays square to the frame. All right, so what we have here is we have our net secured to our frame, okay? And we've created in the net a slot for your simulator screen. Your simulator screen has two Velcro pieces that are sewn onto it, a smaller, one inch Velcro, and then in the rear, we have the larger inch and a half, two inch Velcro. Notice that the smaller Velcro too also has a red tab on it, which you're gonna be connecting with the red tab that's sewn into the simulator screen itself, so that it's going to be centered. So let's do this, let's lay out our screen and get our screen installed now. I've taken now the simulator screen and I've laid it out on the inside of my frame on top of the netting. But what I've made sure to do is that I have the thick band of Velcro, the inch and a half band of Velcro as the front of the screen. You'll also see sewn into the screen is the net return logo denoting this is the front of the screen. The back of the screen has the smaller three quarters of an inch Velcro. So the larger Velcro is to the front. The smaller Velcro is gonna be 
what's on the floor right now and ultimately going to be the rear of the screen. Each Velcro tab, the thicker one on the front and then the smaller one on the rear has a red tab in it denoting the center of the screen. That's going to connect up with the red tab on the thicker Velcro and the red tab on the smaller Velcro, so you know. But remember, the thicker Velcro always faces to the golfer, to the front. So this is gonna be the front of the screen, okay? So once I've laid it out like so, I'm gonna feed the screen through the slot in the netting and then connect up our aluminum tubing to the screen. So I'm gonna pull it through the slot on one side and pull it through the slot on the other. Now I haven't connected up the Velcro yet. I'll do that once I've connected my tubing across. So now let's go and connect the aluminum tubing for the simulator screen. So now again, matching up the colors, I'm going to basically slide the blue to blue for my initial screen connection. And I'll go to the other side and do the same thing with the other color. Once I've connected up those two tubes, we'll connect the straight tube on the inside sleeve of our simulator screen. So the tubing that connects through the sleeve in the screen comprises three tubes, two longer tubes and one smaller tube, just to be aware. So there's three tubes that make this up and again, simply match up the colors. Now what we can do is slide it through the sleeve in the simulator series screen. All right, now that I've slid it, that, that tube through, we're gonna connect up the first color on the sim screen. I'll go to the other side now and we'll connect up the other color. Now that the screen is connected, what we're gonna do is we're gonna stand the unit up. So in this case, you want a partner to help you stand the frame up and we're gonna put the sides on the frame. So I've connected up the two aluminum tubes for the right side of the frame here. And what, what I do here is I lift up the top, I slide the two colors together, and then I could put my foot on the rear of the frame and just lift it up a little bit, and then the silver tab will slide right in. So this is your side support for your simulator series. Real easy connection and it does not have push buttons. Now I'll do the same thing on the other side. So the same thing, I've connected up my two side support tubes and I'm gonna start from the top. I'm gonna slide this in. And then with my foot on the rear of the frame, I'm simply just gonna lift up and slide in the silver tabs. Remember again, these connections do not have push buttons. Now my side supports are installed on my simulator series. Now we have our frame together, our netting on the frame, and our SIM screen laid in place. Remember, you're gonna see the net return logo on the left-hand side of that screen. That's gonna denote the front of the screen, and also the front of the screen is gonna have the larger inch and a half Velcro facing forward, okay? So now that we've got this all set up, we still have to connect our Velcro in the front, we still have to connect our Velcro in the back, and we have to install our one-piece backdrop balances. All right, so now that we've, we have everything ready to go for the balances and backdrop, what we're gonna do is tip the unit forward. So you're gonna need a partner again to tip the unit forward. All right, now that the unit is tipped forward, what we're gonna do is we're gonna connect up our Velcro screen tabs. All right, so let's go ahead and install our Velcro. This is the Velcro on the front of the screen. It has a thicker tab. We're gonna connect up the two red stripes, seal it, 
And then what I'm gonna do is walk across. Seal it. And I'll do the same thing on the other side. I'll seal it real good. We'll do the same thing with the smaller Velcro in back. The Velcro in back. And again, seal it. Working from the middle out to each edge. What we're going to move to next is the installation of the valances. All right, so I have the valance here. It's a one-piece valance now. We're gonna open it up and we're gonna have the simulator series piece of it just centered here. So let me just open it up. And then all we're gonna do is once it's opened and the simulator series is centered, we're gonna locate the two holes that are sewn into the unit and we're just gonna hang them, one and two, and these two holes are designed to support the projector mount kit, okay? So if you purchase the projector mount kit, we'll install that next at this step because you have easy access to install your projector mount kit. If you haven't purchased a projector mount kit where you're mounting your projector off a ceiling, a wall, or doing a side throw thing, then you can, don't have to worry about the installation of this projector mount. We'll demonstrate it now, but if you don't have the projector mount, don't worry about it. We'll just move on to the next step after we install the projector mount. All right, so what we've done is we've installed our projector mount. And the projector mount installation video is a separate video from this video, okay? So make sure to watch that to get to the point where you've installed your projector mount like so. Now that our projector mount is installed in terms of its base unit is put together, let's install it into the simulator series. Okay, so you're gonna need a partner for this as well. So we have one individual on the other side, myself on this side, and we're just sliding it into our bracket. We're kind of doing this in unison, so it's easier to install, and then we're gonna slide it straight down. Okay, should be a nice, snug fit. And you'll notice that the connecting piece here on the T is facing into the valance. This way you know you have it on facing in the correct direction. The next step in this is to connect the main bracket to that piece. So we're gonna do that next in terms of the projector mount. If you haven't purchased the projector mount and you're mounting your projector off the ceiling or a wall, don't worry about this step here. But for those of you who have purchased the projector mount kit, this is the time to install it in terms of installation of your simulator series. Let's install the extension bracket now on your projector mount kit. All right, now we're gonna connect up our extension arm on our projector mount kit. And remember, you're lining up the two blue dots on the kit itself so you know it's going in the right direction. Let's do that now. Now that I've connected, you see the two blue dots are matching. Then I'm just gonna connect up the two screws with the Allen key to connect in the projector mount extension arm. Now that I've got the extension arm installed, what I wanna do since the frame is propped up, I just wanna take the front balance and cover over the front lip of the frame with the balance. Now that I've covered over that front lip, it's nice and smooth. When I stand it up, it'll be a nice fit, and you'll see how that looks. Now that we have the projector mount kit installed onto the frame, you're gonna need a person, again, another person on the other side to stand up the frame. So our next step is now to stand it upright.
Once the unit's upright, you can drop the back balance, adjust it, and now you have the Simulator Series logo in the front of your unit. So it should be facing in the front of your unit with your projector mount kit there as well. What we're gonna do now is we're going to have this excess netting slide under the frame so that any balls hit into the bay can't slip through any of the edges. So now we've wrapped our net underneath, basically tucked it under the frame, okay, so that no balls can shoot out of the lower gaps. We have our screen installed, but we have yet to connect the Velcro tabs on each corner of our screen. So the purpose of the Velcro tabs is not to keep the screen taut, it's really to keep the edges from flipping up when, once you hit a ball into it because what we want in the screen is we do want some movement, okay? The screen is recessed in about six inches from the rear of the frame. We do want a little movement in the screen itself so we eliminate a lot of the noise, a lot of the bounce back, and a lot of the excess wear that goes onto the screen. So now, let's connect up the two Velcro tabs on the lower left and lower right of the screen. When you get your simulator series, you'll notice the lines in the screen, because we fold up that screen, obviously, to ship it to you. It is made of a heavyweight, heavyweight material, so that heavyweight material tends to crease. So, in order to get these lines out, two ways to do it. You could hang your unit, okay, which is the way I like to do it, and iron this out with steam, to make it a lot easier, or you could use a really good wand steamer. Probably the best thing is a medium to high heat, not too high, because it's a polyester screen, so we don't want to melt it. Not too high, but with steam to take out each, each crease. The nice thing about ironing when it's up like this is there's some downward pressure and the steam, and it leans against the iron real nice. You can also, if you want, take off the screen and iron it, or iron it before you actually put it on. But I think that my favorite way to get the wrinkles out of our screens is with an iron, medium to hot, with steam, and it'll take all your creases out. With your simulator series comes your side barriers, okay? So now that we've connected up the lower left and lower right, Velcro tab so our screen doesn't flip upon ball impact. The next step is we're going to install our side barriers. Our side barriers are really easy to install because both sides of your simulator series has a Velcro strip running all the way down it. So we're going to connect up one side down the Velcro strip, one side down the opposite Velcro strip, and it's going to be literally that simple. And then each of those side barriers are held out with a single sandbag. Remember your simulator series comes with four sandbags. Two that go on the rear of the frame, and then one uh, left and a right that go on the uh, extension of the side barrier. Your side barriers have a red stripe and a blue stripe. Your red stripe goes on the right side of the side barrier, your blue stripe goes on the left side. And that's basically because of the Velcro and how it connects. So, red is to the right, blue is to the left, Let's connect these up. You're also going to want a small step stool or ladder to do this step. Here we go. There's a small blue Velcro hook that's simply going to be used to connect at the top of the side barrier. And just select a netting hole to put that through. I'm going to connect the Velcro first. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna hook this small Velcro tab through. And this is just so that if the Velcro gets pulled, it stays in place with this hook. And now once that hook's in, 
I'm simply going to connect up the Velcro going all the way down. Now that I've seamed all the entire Velcro strip down the side for our side barrier, there's another small hook, a hook and loop on the bottom, which I'm just gonna tie through the lower level of the net as well. Now there's one more tab, small tab, on the left side barrier, which is in blue. Again, the red side barriers are the right hand side. And this small tab connects to your sandbag like so. And the sandbag is ultimately what extends out the side bearer. But here's something important to note. You tag that small Velcro to the handle of the sandbag. A lot of people will also, rather than use our sandbags, you can also use a rubberized hand weight, maybe 10 or 15 pounds, if you don't want to go through the process of filling our sandbags with sand. Each sandbag holds approximately 15 to 20 pounds of play sand. Each bag of play sand is usually 50 pounds, so you're gonna to wanna to at least pick up two bags of play sand to fill up all four of the sandbags that come with your simulator series. So once you've tagged the sandbag onto your simulator series, you then can walk it out and stretch your side barrier like so. Real easy. When you're not using your side barrier, your simulator series, you can recapture that floor space by simply walking the side barrier in if you don't want to keep it extended all the time. Once you've completed that step with the left-hand side barrier, you're now going to go install the right-hand side barrier and it's going to be the identical process. The last piece of it is connecting your sandbag again to the small Velcro tab on the right hand side bear. So then both side bears will be installed at that point. All right, now the last step in the process before the actual projector gets attached to the, it's the projector mount is the installation of this T, okay? And again, this is part of the projector mount installation video, so you make sure to watch that. But this is kind of the last step of it. On this, you have a silver gray marking, and actually you can't see it, but on top of this bracket, you have a silver gray marking as well. And you wanna make sure that you mark this to that. So in essence, your holes are recessed so that your screws fit in to connect this bracket. And again, this has an Allen key, which comes with the projector mount. Now, once these two screws are connected, your projector slides on to this T-bar here. You then have your adjustments in the rear, so we can push the push button and adjust it in or out, depending upon the distance from your projector to the screen. So with your projector mount kit, you also get the connection, the universal connection that connects your projector to the physical mount connected to this T-bar. So now that you've connected the T-bar, okay, the last piece is your, ultimately your projector gets connected to the projector mount itself, and the T-bar slides right into the slotted connection here. So you can adjust your projector left or right, up or down, depending upon which projector you've purchased. And again, remember, you have the uh, projector mount kit, which is gonna extend in or out, depending upon your projector and what type of screen size image you're throwing. You're gonna wanna use a four, three contrast ratio with your projector, and you're gonna wanna make sure that it's an ultra short throw projector as well. Once this final step is complete, you're pretty much all set to connect the electronics to your simulator series. Your projector, your computer, your, your software, and, and any other related accessories with your golf simulator. A few small things to consider too uh, once you've completed your setup. You're going to make sure that you have your projector 
a long HDMI cable, 15 or 20 feet, because it's going to connect from your projector back down and around into your computer or iPad running your simulator software. You're going to want the same length power uh, cable as well that's going to connect from your projector down back into a power source, okay? And then your simulator software along with the computer or iPad that your simulator software is going to run on. So those are the really the key things to remember as additional items for setup of your simulator series with any simulator software package that you run. All right, that completes the assembly of your simulator series. If you have any additional questions, please do not hesitate to reach out to us directly via phone or via email on our website. Thank you again for watching and thank you so much for your support of our products and our company.